Watt as the great mechanical engineer who produced what might be called the first piece of modern mechanical engineering. Today is a very important event. It marks the official opening of the Watt and the World exhibition, which is an exhibition of archives, objects, ephemera, etc. that are designed to illustrate Watt's life in Scotland and in Birmingham, his family and his work, and the ways in which he's been commemorated since his death. What was huge in the 19th and 20th centuries, but he has, he's kind of gone very quiet, you know, people are not so aware perhaps of this period of history, so I think it's, it's, it's important that Birmingham, you know, remembers all its histories. Um, and there would be no Birmingham as we know it without the um, innovation and the, and the, and the, you know, the drive and the, and, the, and, the, and the power of Watts engines. Today is an important event, not just for the exhibition, but because we're launching a new book, The Power to Change the World, James Watt, A Life in 50 Objects. It doesn't treat James Watt as a great hero. He was a very significant inventor a creator of the modern world in many ways. I think it's been a really fantastic collaborative project um, uh, with the university, but I mean also the, the library and the, the Museum and Art Gallery and the Assay Office, because it's just brought different perspectives, different points of view, uh, different collections together. The exhibition, like the book, is an attempt to explore what in a wide context, not just to portray him as a great steam engineer. He was that, but he was also somebody who invented other things. What we see are not just the things that Watt did and his letters and the things he created, but also material that relates to the people he worked with, his family and other members of the Lunar Society. The real sort of quality that Malcolm and, 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 and the book has brought to the project is, is just a wider range of uh, inputs and perspectives and uh, different voices and, and it's made, um, you know, it's made a more rounded picture of what. One of the things that I've been interested in over the last couple of years is how James Watt entered popular culture. So I've been collecting what might be called James Watt ephemera which includes trade cards and adverts and postcards, but also objects that were designed to be sold to the public as a means of uh, making sense of James Watt for a wider audience. There's also Watt as he's revealed in popular culture in other countries. Watt, for example, was very big in Japan. And there's a wonderful woodblock print dating from the 1870s, which I was able to, to purchase, which is in the exhibition, which is a representation, a Japanese representation of what and the cattle. There are so many nice bits. I, I like uh, Jesse Watt's dog, who's been, uh, uh, who's been clipped and therefore spoiled, according to her brother. Um, and I have, to, I, have to, I have to like James Watt himself there, Chantra's bust, which is a, a very powerful, powerful um, I don't know, statement about the, the man. Yeah. James Watt is a historical figure, but he still resonates with us today. And one thing I hope is that the exhibition, together with the book, will provide an opportunity for people, whether they're academics or heritage professionals or members of the public, to look at James Watt and his context and his relationships in new ways.